Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Hats Off Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Ray, and again, I'm excited to come to you with another week of hopefully exciting and um, inspiring business education for you all. So I started thinking, um, you know, we were really in planning meetings right now at 17 Hats. Um, It's mid-year. We actually do our yearly planning in the summer because um, the cycle, like the seasonality of 17 Hats is people are um, very excited to uh, kind of restart their business and, and get their business organized in the fall. And then of course, that same gumption we find at the beginning of the year as well. So we do all of our yearly planning um, in the summer, which makes it a little bit more exciting. Summer is kind of a slow time for solopreneurs in general. I know some of you are busy bees, especially um, wedding industry people, but for a lot of you, you take off in the summer. And so uh, we find that everything's a little bit slower, which gives us ample time to really plan for the next 12 months. So it made me think, what are you all doing to plan, right? Are you planning for the next at least six months? We are half a year down now. 2024 is halfway over. Crazy, right? Absolutely crazy. Um, And it goes by so quickly. And for many solopreneurs, we're constantly feeling like we're chasing our tail, right? We can't keep up. We can't get one foot in front of the other. Um, That's where the chaos sets in. That's where the overwhelm sets in. Um, We just can't seem to get a really nice stride with productivity. Um, And mainly that's because we don't plan, right? So somebody asked me a while back ago, like, why do you think small business owners, you know, the majority of them do not succeed? And I thought about it and I was like, well, The reality is, is most of them don't plan to succeed. They want to succeed. They think about succeeding. They possibly even dream about succeeding, but they don't actually plan to succeed. Let that sink in for a second. When was the last time you planned for success? You planned to succeed in business. Most solopreneurs are in, um, gosh, they are in the survival mode. You're planning for the next one cell or maybe the next five cells or the next, you know, six cells, the next five clients, the next six clients. That's what most solopreneurs are planning for. They're not actually planning for the whole year of success or the next three years of success. Or how do I get to 10 years? What does that look like? What does my business success look like? So there's a difference in planning for a successful business versus planning for the next cell, the planning for the next five cells. And when you're in survival mode, really it is the next cell, the next five cells. I just, I need to make, you know, X amount of money, right? We don't necessarily think about the business success. So I encourage you to do that. And there's no better time to start thinking about your business success than now. Like whether you do it now and maybe you try to do it now and it falls off and you have what I like this to call like a nice restart um, and you just keep it top of mind, right? You have to start planning for business success for your business to succeed. So I love the, um, you know, beginning of the year and the mid year and the quarters, those are all kind of really good times to kind of rethink, replan, um, just step back away from the chaos of business a little bit and go, what am I actually doing here? And what do I actually want to succeed? But some of you are like, but I'm in survival mode, right? I just need to make money right now. And so let's talk about the balancing of it, the balancing of survival mode and planning for success, a successful business. And so this is where, um, when, when you plan many, many businesses plan, we do the same thing. You plan for, you know, the one year, what is the one year plan, right? And you make your quarterly plans from that one year plan. And what is a three year plan? And what is a 10 year plan? It doesn't matter if you're never going to get there in 10 years or even three years, 
right? Three years can take some companies 15 years, right? 10 years can take some companies, you know, 20 years. That's okay. That's not the point. And many times the 10 year plan or the 10 year vision is going to change many, many, many times, right? It's going to be one vision. As you learn more about your company, your vision changes, right? And what you decide to do changes and that's okay. It doesn't actually matter what the vision is, but it is that you have one because when you start planning for success of a business, that is where those three years and those 10 year plans come in. Okay. So you can have a one year plan of, I need to do X amount of money of revenue. Okay. And how are you going to do that? What revenue streams are you going to take in? Do you need to change your pricing structure? Do you need to do more on social media? Do you need to make more connections? Do you need to um, network more? Do you need to learn social media ads? Do you need to dive into email marketing or do you just need to get your follow-up processes done? Right? That is one year. And those are things that every quarter you can be going, okay, this quarter I'm going to do follow-up processes, which is 17 ads. Uh, the next quarter I'm going to do email marketing. The next quarter I'm really going to focus in on the social media game, right? Most of the time solopreneurs are trying to do all of it. They want to be great at all of it, that they actually stagnate their, um, their knowledge of any of it, right? Because they're just doing 2% of everything, um, you're just treading water you're not actually making any movement towards the, towards the goal. But that's one side. That's the survival side is what do I need to do right now to get my next five or 10 clients for this year, right? Or one client this month or two clients this month, that's survival. The three-year plan is really when it comes into building your success for your business. What do I want my business to look like in three years or 10 years? Okay. What, is you, what do you want that to look like? Um, there can be a revenue number in it. There can be an amount of um, revenue streams that you have. Do you have an assistant? Are you outsourcing things? Um, you know, are clients just coming to you, right? You're not having to market so hard for clients. What type of client do you see in your future? What's the personality type? What does that ideal client look like? Who is that? How much money are they spending with you every single time that they, uh, they, they purchase your services? What does your client experience feel like? How much time are you actually spending in the business? Are you hiring somebody? Do you have a location? Is it in your home? Right? Are you working three days a week or seven days a week? What does that, what does that look like three years away? maybe even 10 years away. If that's your three-year plan, maybe your 10 years even bigger. Think about, you know, the, the location you're on or you're only servicing your town, maybe now or your community or maybe your city or your county. Do you want to service your old state? Do you want to work around the world? Do you want to go into education? Do you want to offer workshops or, oh, I don't want to do any of that teaching stuff that some people are doing. I just want to do my craft. Maybe you want to figure out a way to make some sort of mailbox money, right? So you have a revenue stream that's just making money for you. That's like templates or um, selling some selling selling some sort of course that's a repeatable course. What does that ten year goal look like? So when you balance the um, gosh, just living in the right now, right survival mode with the building mode, you have to make sure every year, right? At least every half, first half and second half, that you're doing something that is pushing you towards that three year and that 10 year plan, three year and 10 year plan. So when I, when we, it's for 17 hats, when we map out our goals, we talk about, you know, our client experience goals and our revenue goals and, um, you know, what, whatever they are, right. Revenue, client experience, uh, members, um, right. Those big buckets. And then we also have, what are we doing towards our three-year plan? What are we doing towards our 10-year plan? How are we ensuring that we are making progress towards those, right. And the launch of the template marketplace, 
that's on one of our plans. I'm not going to, I, I don't dive into our plans too much because there are plans and I always, um, I always say plan and plan in silence. Right. Um, so, but those were part of our, you know, our bigger three year and our 10 year plans, the launch of that. So it was really exciting to get that out. Um, so you're always having to think, where am I going and what is the one baby step I can make towards it? Right. So if your three year plan is hiring an assistant, right, then maybe this year you really start to nail down your processes and you start to automate your processes so that when you do hire an assistant, by the time you hire it, right, right. By the time you hire your assistant, all your processes are completely nailed down and they know exactly what they need to do to help you. So there's nothing worse than hiring an assistant and still doing it all yourself because you don't know what they can do, right? Or what they should do. There's a thousand things for them to do, but they don't know how to do any of it. It's because your processes aren't documented, right? If you want to um, expand your reach in three years. Maybe in three years you want to service your whole state or you want to go global or you want to go through nationwide. You want to start traveling more. What are some connections? What are three connections you can make this year that is going to help you three years from now? So you're constantly, I wouldn't say constantly. Let me take that back. So you're looking at that plan and going, what can be done now so that you can do that while you are doing what you need to do to survive. You're going to have to balance the survival mode in the building mode. Otherwise you just burn out. You never reach that success. If you want the success, you have to plan for it. You have to believe it. You have to realize it's about the long term, not necessarily about the short term. And I get it. Everybody needs to make money, right? And you want to have clients and you want to um, get the experience under your belt too, which is huge. You know, I, so many people, the, the hot topic right now is, you know, you shouldn't offer your service for free ever. You know, people should pay you something for what you're worth. And I've said it on here before, I don't necessarily agree with that. If you can help somebody out, and get a ton of experience and you know if they can be a mentor i'm not saying to help everybody out but if it is the right person right where you can get experience under your belt in an un in an unpressure situation right you're not taking any money for, for it so there's no pressure on you and it's purely experience that's huge that is a long-term move long-term move because you are accepting all of that knowledge. You are investing in you and your education and your knowledge. That's an investment. And when you are an entrepreneur, when you're a solo business owner, you have to gamble on yourself, right? Especially you can take money and you can go and put them in the stocks or invest them in some way, shape or form, if that is your thing, or you can invest them in you. That is your choice. <coughs> when you invest in you and you take a gamble on yourself, you are in complete control, right? Which makes it so exciting and so fun. A little bit of pressure, but really exciting. But when you take a gamble on yourself, when you invest in yourself, you have to make sure, and this is what I see a lot of people not doing, is they invest in themselves and they don't do anything with that investment. It's just like these, these three-year goals. If you're going to invest the time into writing the goals and getting some stuff done, right? Taking some steps towards those goals. Once you take the steps towards those goals, what are you going to do with what you've learned? That's always the question in small business. What are you going to do with what you learn? You've learned something from every client. You learn something every time you do something. You learn something from um, every lead phone call. But what you do with it is the power. Most people, um, you know, just talking about the survival mode, most people get off a phone call the, the lead's upset. The lead doesn't book with them. And they say, oh, it's the lead. I was too expensive for them. I was whatever, or they were bad. They were, you know, 
you're going to have one of those every once in a while, but not all of them, right? So if I was too expensive for the lead, and that's why the lead didn't choose me, I have that knowledge now, what am I going to do with that, right? How am I going to go, wow, how can the next person who feels like I'm ex too expensive, how am I going to be able to close them still? Everything you do is knowledge and you have to put that into play, which is what's really important. So I think, you know, as we come in to this, um, gosh, six months into 2024, right? We're in July at this point, really think about survival mode. What do I need to do? I need to make money. I need to get clients. What am I doing for the next six months? Am I doing something for Black Friday? Am I not? Am I doing something for the holiday season? Am I not? Start planning that now. You should are, if you're planning on doing something for the holiday season, you should be marketing that at this point, right? If you're doing fall something, Christmas or holiday something, that should be in your marketing. You should be reaching out to your VIP clients. You should be reaching out to, if you don't have any VIP clients right now, you should be reaching out to your friends and family and letting them know what you're doing, asking them for referrals, asking them to shout out, tell their friends about it, right? Get people in now. That's going to allow you to have a much um, calmer season this year too, and hopefully meet your goals faster. Okay. So that's one portion of it. The other portion of it is you have to plan for that three year and 10 year. So action items from this podcast, if you have not sat down and said, what have I done well in 2024 so far and write those things down? And what have I not done well in 2024 and write those things down and say, what do I need to do to have a successful year for the next six months? What needs to happen? What would deem 2024 a success? And how am I going to make that happen? And then write down, what does my business look like in three years? What does my business look like in 10 years? And what can I do in the next six months to move the ball just a little bit closer to that three year and that 10 year? What seeds can I plant now? If you have not done that yet, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to take an hour, two hours by yourself, go to a coffee shop, go to a park, go to somewhere nice where you have silence and no interruptions and really give a strong, you know, reflection on the last six months. Think about the next six months and allow yourself to dream about your future because that is how successful businesses are made. They plan to succeed. Failure is not an option. There's no other, there's, there's no plan B. There's only plan A, which is success, right? So plan to succeed. So I highly encourage you to do it. Let me know if you have any questions, let us know how it turns out for you. But I, man, I look forward to the next six months. I think 2024 is going to be a fabulous, fabulous year. It's already going great. And uh, yeah, I think the next six months are just going to be as amazing, if not even better. And I hope it is for you as well. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day and I will see you next week.